This is the 10th video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar, mainly so we can use those to target chord tones when we're improvising and follow chord progression, follow the changes, uh, and know where we are when we're improvising perfectly, addressing the harmony, but also it's great technique practice, it's great for composing melodies, it's great for music theory, knowledge and mapping out the fretboard, it's great for ear training, all this stuff. In today's video, we're doing the augmented triad. We're gonna do five positions, five melodic arpeggio guitar shapes of the augmented triad. If you want a free resource to follow along, I have a chord tone vocabulary pack. You can get that with the link in the top of the description that has the all the chord tone shapes from this lesson and all the lessons in this series. Also down there is a link to a playlist of all the videos in this series. In this video, I'm gonna go through and just play up and down each of those five augmented triad melodic arpeggio guitar shapes. And that's the way that I want you to be able to initially play them and work on them. So after that, I'll go through and just explain the fingering that I'm using and recommending for the left hand on how to do that. That's That can be a little confusing, so I want to give you exactly what left hand fingers to use. And after that, we're just going to go through and improvise with each of those five shapes with the augmented triad, which is our next step. We want to be able to do that so we can eventually work towards improvising over these chord changes as they're moving through real music, which I'll be talking about more in the future. For now, we just want to do that on any one chord type. This is going to be fun, very odd chord, uh, interesting sounding one, challenging one. Let's get into it. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics, all designed to help you gain more creative control over music so you can express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, so this is a very strange one, augmented triad. If you haven't seen any other videos from this series, definitely check out some of them, any of them, as many as you're interested in for all the other chord types, because this one is so different and so odd and, un and unique. Um, there's a link in the description to just check out any of those other chord types. We're gonna go through the same process that we've been doing for this whole series on this chord type, but it's just one that's less satisfying feeling, but still I find it extremely valuable to map out the augmented triad because it's gonna come in handy. If a chord like major seven sharp five comes up, I like to outline an augmented triad and have that ready to go instead of, I'm trying to uh, have a system to memorize as, as little as possible to be used on as many chords as possible. So augmented triad becomes uh, something that's useful over many different situations. Uh, but let's just go through the process here. The first thing we want to do is just get used to the shape with the root to root. Now it's so ambiguous sounding because it's all major thirds major third major third major third major third major third any of these notes could be the root of an augmented triad but c is the root in our case we're treating it that way so it's especially important to play root to root root repeat the root pause and repeat the root don't pause or repeat anywhere else that's how i like to outline these things the reason the fingering is so kind of stretchy and uh cumbersome and annoying and that's how it's going to be for the next a uh, few chord types for chord types that are more rare and more altered and from synthetic scales or from not from just normal uh, major diatonic scale. The reason that I have to stretch over here for the three and I'm not playing the three over here is that I want arpeggio shapes, I want chord tone forms to fit within scale forms that are useful to play over that chord. And so I wanna have the chord tones ready and then have the scales work around those chords and not have those two things be different. The guitar is so uh, complicated in terms of the fretboard, uh, you can play so many things in so many different ways that streamlining it is very, very useful. And so as much as this is an annoying thing to do and it can, if you try to stretch and you know reach your wrist out, that can cause some issues over time, uh, but it's worth it for the way we're mapping things out. Just be careful with this and shift over instead of kind of reaching over, even though I'll do that sometimes and a lot of people will do that. Um, if you can't or don't want to, it's perfectly fine to just hop. Okay, so. The fingering here is going to be first finger, fourth finger, third finger, middle, then third, reaching, kind of reaching over and under, 
first, third, middle, third, pinky, first. Okay. Okay, so this fits with the augmented scale, which is one of the scales that this chord type, augmented triad, can come from. So if you play the scale, all those chord tones are within that scale. It also fits with the altered scale. I did a, a two-part lesson on the altered scale. I'll put a link to that in the description. That's going to be useful for the next two chord types in this series as well. So in any case, that's our first step we always want to do, and that's what we've done on all the chord types in this series, is map it out with the root-to-root -root approach. Now we want to do a melodic pattern where we just go up to the next chord tone and back down and do that off each chord tone. This helps us map it out. Even if you don't ever use that melodically, it helps break it up so you're not just only seeing it in one direction or another. Other melodic patterns can be useful too, but it do at least one. And then we want to just practice playing kind of constant improvisation with it. Again, this is way less satisfying than other chord types because there's no real home bass sound. The root doesn't really sound like anything grounding. But nonetheless, we want to get used to, can we just... keep playing over it. Any tempo, just kind of constant notes. That's our fitness test. How well do we know it and see it? Okay. Then the next thing is to try to do something that is kind of has a musical phrasing. These are the five steps I've been doing for every chord type in this series to get fluent and comfortable playing expressively and freely over any chord type. Um, so again, this one's going to be hard because there's no kind of ground grounding sound when it comes to the root. But anyway, just do something rhythmically interesting. So you can still do something rhythmically interesting and try to make your phrasing be something musical, even with such an ambiguous and nebulous sound as this augmented triad. So then the last thing is to add notes. And this is where it really drives, this is where it's actually useful. And this is where we spend kind of years on it. Once we map those couple things out and we can review those anytime we want, we really spend a lot of time on just, okay, now that I see all those chord tones, and yes, you can be musical just with the chord tones, in real music, what do I want to add around it? And you got to experiment. So the thing I recommend for this, on an, if you are playing over an augmented triad, is every single note you can add a whole step below or above. And that just makes the whole tone scale. So if this is a chord tone, okay, those notes are available. This is a chord tone. Those notes are available. Here's a chord tone. Whole tone scale. Um, for this chord type, that's what I recommend. If you're playing over something different, uh, and also just go by ear and play chromatically too, Any anytime you can do that. So if I know that this is chord tone, chord tone, so then that note's part of the whole tone scale, well, I'll just connect chromatically. It's totally fine. Okay, so if I play with a harmony under me, kind of a backing track thing, Take your time, taste things. No notes off limits. you kind of got off the rails then just go back to chord tones and if you can't see the chord tones clearly then you need to map them out more and keep doing the exercises in the other steps because those should be crystal clear 
anytime you need them, which makes experimenting and exploring very viable. So that backing track is just a triad. I'm just playing C augmented triad, different voicings of it. So it's a great little test. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do with the other four arpeggio shapes and chord tone forms for this chord. So let's do the next position of C augmented triad. Again, cumbersome and annoying. This part is actually quite nice. It's just like a cascading angle of notes. One, three, sharp, five, one. But then you gotta reach over to this three here. And I would hop over there, kind of shift with your third finger so you can use your pinky and your middle for those uh, top three strings. Okay, then do our melodic pattern. Take your time with that, just make sure you can do it. It's gonna be awkward with that reach and that, sh and that shift, but just make sure you can do it. Okay, and then we're going to try to do something, or then we're gonna play constant, just improvisation. We can use the backing track or not. I'm just kind of testing. How well do I know these? Can I just keep playing chord tones? Then after that, play something rhythmically interesting. Something with phrasing, something with repetition, make it feel like a song. And lastly, we're gonna add notes around and any whole step on either side of any notes makes the whole tone scale. And once you have those, you can connect chromatically between them. And that's great to play with uh, harmony underneath you. Let's do the next position. Here's the root here. Now, a great way to remember the fingering positions, the shapes of the augmented triad arpeggios, is that if your first finger is playing a root, your pinky is gonna play the, no, it doesn't have to be pinky, but the third of the chord is gonna be on the same string in all of the shapes. So when the root was here, the third was here. When the root was here, the third was here. The third is on the same string if your first finger is playing the root with these particular shapes. Here's one, here's three, here's sharp five, here's one, here's three, here's sharp five, one, three. That's the shape here. So we're gonna go repeat the root. It's great ear training because we hear, wow, wow, that is the sound of augmented triad just coming out of our own playing and our own fingers broken up individually melodically it's very good to recognize and and to just repeat and explore a bunch with our own playing um so but this one first finger fourth finger third second finger first finger there's that cascade again now we're gonna reach over here with our second finger on that same fret and then that allows us to position shift over to first finger second finger it's kind of like a position pivot okay okay then make sure we can do our melodic pattern okay then make sure you can just play constant <laughs> improvisation notes slower is fine Make 
sure that feels okay, that you know the, the chord tones really well, then try to do something rhythmically. Rhythmically interesting, that is an actual musical idea with phrasing. Okay, and then lastly, just play with the actual harmony underneath. Use something like iReal Pro or Band in a Box or uh, YouTube, just search YouTube for augmented triad jam track or something like that if you need. I'm just using a loop pedal. Okay, then you can add those whole steps around. Notice that I, you know, I could do a lesson on here's the whole tone scale and here's how it works over this. And you know, I totally, I totally could and would do something like that. But the chord tones are such the actual sound of the chord that I like to start with that. That's how I think of improvising over harmonies. And then I'll let anything happen around it. There are no rules. Experiment. All right, let's do the next position. First finger on fourth string is the root, and that means the third is gonna be on the fourth string as well. Okay, now your third finger is gonna play the sharp five, and then pinky's gonna play the root, middle finger's gonna play the third. That is a technique hand buster. Just because of the alternating between fourth and third finger like this, is really tricky to do. Take it nice and slow. Then we have sharp five and three here. So with the root to root approach, Make sure we, we can do our melodic pattern. Okay, then make sure we can just play. Sometimes that sounds like I'm doing other melodic patterns, partly because I worked on other melodic patterns, but also it's just from wanting to keep playing notes and keeping it interesting and broken up and not trying to avoid just only playing up and down. A little bit of that is okay. So anyway, once you feel like you see it enough to just keep playing notes, then try a musical idea. Really simple. <laughs> Whoops, minus that open string. Right, it's becoming thematic because I'm repeating it, right? It didn't sound like anything at first, but it's like, oh, repeat it enough, repeat it down an octave. Like I said, with this chord, that, that's the hardest step with this chord because it's so, uh, it's not grounded sounding at all. Then we'll try to add those extra notes around it. Just testing things out. Coming back to the root a lot. I'm just trying things out and coming back. Or come back to any other chord tone. Those are your home bass notes. I was just playing with a lot of whole tone scale. playing a minor third it's not in the chord at all but raising that up to the the major third okay this is how it's done this is how we get comfortable with these things this is how you can just rip it over whatever chord type and these videos are kind of long because i'm just sitting here really kind of practicing with you practicing in front of you just like okay let me just 
do those steps, experiment, play around, just get comfortable with it. That's the only way that it's going to be comfortable when those harmonies come up in real music, which is, it's not automatic that that will happen just from doing this, but we have to do this first and just feel like we can play in those various positions. We do have one more position to do, so let's just take care of that. Here is the root, third, sharp five, root, finger three, two, one, one, okay. Because the root is with our first finger, we're gonna use the major third on the same string like we talked about. Roll that first finger, and the sharp five is the only note on that bottom string there, so. Okay, that's that first step, root to root. Now we're just gonna do our melodic pattern. Okay, then we're gonna play constant notes, improv. Not easy, really. But we're just saying, can I see it? You could do it way slower and just jump around. Do you see the chord? Well enough, all the chord tones. Okay, and try to do something musically, just chord tones only. I'm gonna use the backing track for this just for fun. Okay, so as much of an idea as I can do with just those chord tones, I kind of like it. A little something, a little musical. Now we're going to add extra notes. A lot of times from the whole tone, but doesn't have to be. Test anything out. That's fine. Don't have to like it, but it can be used. Such a weird chord to do this on. Such a weird chord. But if we're wanting to learn all these chord types and kind of have anything ready to go and and uh, be ready to improvise over a chord progression that could include any chord at all, this is definitely one of the ones I recommend. Um, it's way later on the list. We've done so many chord types in this series. Um, but yeah, it's one that comes in really useful. Without it, we're left hanging just a little bit when certain chords come up. So, uh, and it's just fun practice, good technique, good for our ears to hear the weirdness of that chord and kind of start to recognize it a little more um, and just map out the fretboard better. Uh, so the next two chord types are also these kind of rare altered chords. They're dominant seventh chords, uh, dominant seven sharp five and dominant seven flat five. Um, and they're really fun to work on. So two more in this series and I'm really looking forward to those. All right, that's an interesting chord. We have two more chord types left in this series. Definitely grab my free chord tone vocabulary pack, the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes for all of these chord types in this whole series, definitely with the augmented triad in there as well. Free download PDF, get it for the, with the uh, link in the top of the, des the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Hit that like button if you liked this lesson. I'm here every week with a new lesson. Next week we're doing dominant seven, sharp five. It's the augmented triad structure, but adding a flat seven to it, which is really, really helpful for kind of more advanced sounding jazz improvisations and nailing changes when you have a dominant seven, sharp five chord there. But it's also just interesting musical structure stuff. So even if we're not wanting to improvise in jazz, very cool stuff to work on. So I'm looking forward to these next two chord types, altered type dominant chords. Dominant seven sharp five next week. See you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.